Welcome to another episode of EnviroConnect Biz. Here is where we highlight what businesses are doing to protect the environment. Today we had the opportunity of traveling down south to Punta Gorda and Forest Home. We'll be meeting a Mr. Palma who's going to be telling us more on composting and how your backyard gardening can be more fruitful and vegetable. Pretty soon I'll look and open a new garden. Mr. Abib Palma. Mr. Palma, can you tell us what it is that you're doing to protect the environment? Well, I here at my little garden, my space, I create um, a compost system. Um, it's basically using the waste materials from the few people in town that does food juices and, and there's a lot of waste. So and even myself, I use, you know, veggies, fruits, and so, well, what you could do with it? Oh, I could turn it into compost. It doesn't take a lot. It takes a few weeks, and there's other systems that we use that takes maybe just a week, and it saves and helps the environment instead of just throwing it away, and it saves a lot. Okay. So what got you into doing composting? A um, couple things. One, I like gardening. Okay. And um, we we need to feed back the soil. We need to feed the earth. We need to feed the plants. So one of the best things that I've, I mean, always resources is a problem. But there is much around us that are just going to waste. You know, we clean our yards, we have grass. So we could use it, we could recycle it. And that's some of the things that goes into the compost. And uh, like I said, we um, I look around and I see people doing juices and all that bulk material just going to the trucks and go to the dump. And um, I encourage people to grow plants and grow food, whether it's flowers, ornamentals, or your little veggies. And I said, well, best I could be helping them by get, getting rid of some of the waste and showing them the end product that we have, you know. Okay, so walk us through what you have here today. And these are mostly fruit, peels, or oranges. There is um, watermelon and pineapple. You know, there's a bunch of different things. So different times we have to always, a compost has to be mixed with is a, a green and dry and, and brown materials. So we have to have a combination so that things could work properly. At the different time, depends on the amount of water it gets, it would decompose at a different rate. But we want to make sure that there is a, equal balance. So at the end product, you have what is considered compost, what we consider a fertilizer. If we only uh, throw something down and it breaks down, it just becomes, it gets rotten, and then it's not a fertilizer. It's a, that's a different because it doesn't go through the processes. And that's where we need to look and learn a little bit. And, you know, and as we do it, we learn a little bit every day. So we, the we end product, we look at a good quality, right? So here, uh, like I said, we have raw material, and what I do, I, if I just leave this by itself, it will decompose. But I don't just want it decompose and become slurry and, and, and smelly. So here I collect rice hulls, and this is dry, so I'm adding it to this, to, to my material, to my raw material that I collected, right? And then this is a process that I do every two weeks. Every week we add we add to it, and within two weeks I'll be turning this again, right? So just to dump up a little bit, the shovel will take me all day. And we just don't want to dump one material, so we try to make sure we cover it evenly. So for food scraps, veggies, we either feed the the animals with it, or pets, or, or um, animals that you raise, or chickens, or you could compost it. Now I'm ready for another more green materials. So on my another harvest again, and I'll pick up materials, I'll be dumping some more, and then I do the same process over. I have this for two weeks. And you turn it? This doesn't turn. Okay. 
When I turn it in two weeks time, I'll be flipping it over to this side, right? If it's too wet, I'll add a little bit more rice hulls to it and it, it turns to this, right? So we could see how much it's breaking down and we could see that it's adding, is it a fungus creating on it? And it has a temperature, it gets very hot, right? And that's what we want to accumulate, the heat. So we accumulate um, fungus and different bacteria and then it, it breaks down and it has the process. Like I said, if we only throw it there, it doesn't have the fungus or the bacteria that it needs for it to um, develop as a compost to become a fertilizer. Otherwise, it will break down and will just go down the drain, disappear, right? Um, so that would be two weeks on that side, two weeks on this side, that's four weeks. And then we continue and it goes more and we have, you know, we have, have it break down some more, right? And then when I turn that again over, I have this, right? So six to eight weeks and we have a dry, we need to make sure it keep dry, not getting wet. When it goes to the garden, it will continue, it will get wet. That's when it continues to break and release all the nutrients to your plants. Because this already has all. So in addition to my rice hulls or sawdust that I add in, I, I uh, would also add uh, charcoal or ashes. You know, there's a little bits of, bits of charcoal and ashes in it. And that's, it helps to add. Because I'm making a fertilizer. I'm not just making, I'm not just creating soil for my garden. I'm creating a fertilizer to feed my plants. And when I do and I have manures, it get added in. And so the end result is, is a very rich compost, very rich fertilizer. So it's a very easy process. And like I said, we could, it's weird to use your waste materials at home. And what your neighbors have, what you have around you. And it's not difficult. Um, that's a process at a, um, where we're moving them every two weeks. And then from there, I, I bag them. I would either sieve, put it through a sieve, or I use a little machine and I pass it through just to control to make sure if there's any little bit of sticks, it get, it get chopped up, broken up. But um, it is fine so that when it goes to your garden bed it, and you, uh, you water, start water your beds, or it will mix into your soil and it feeds in directly. So it doesn't have to be waiting for it to break down anymore, right? This is ready and it's, it's all organic. It's not, it's no um, high um, end product. I mean, it's no big work for it. Now, this is rich enough so when it goes into your, into your soil, it continues to uh, build the health of your soil. It's not just, you see, when we do the compound fertilizers, you're adding a, a you are the nutrients, but then you're killing your microbes out of your soil, right? Yes, you're adding food to the plants, but then nothing to the soil. And so you're not building the environment. You're not restructuring the environment. So I've been doing gardening and composting for years and teaching it with kids and youths in school. And for me, the biggest thing is to, and I keep doing this and I've been, I started doing this for at least this system of compost for at least a year and um, putting it out to the market and people who would come by and buy, buy it here. Um, this is all I value it for $15 for this 50 pound bag. And I encourage youths, you know, kids, you know, to get into the garden. You don't have to have a big garden. It could be just a bucket, just a container and you're feeding your, your plants. So that's the way I see it and I encourage everybody to do a little bit. And there you have it. The next time you have organic waste at home, don't let it remain as waste. Turn it into composting and do backyard gardening. If you want to contact Mr. Palma for composting, you can contact him in the number listed below. And of course, do something greater for the environment by using your organic waste instead of taking it at the landfill.